21 years ago, Resident Evil 2 was released upon the masses and it was an instant classic. It's a game that has been referred to as one of the best games of all 21 years ago. So the two main characters of the game, Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield, uh, one of them is looking for her brother who's like a scientist who ran to Europe or something, and the other one is a cop. It's his first day on the job and there's zombies all over the place. Classic, classic cute meat. That's what that is right there. You know, classic cute meat story. You know, the whole world's going to shit. Zombie virus, poison, bioweapon all over the place in undisclosed Raccoon City. If you name your town Raccoon City, you are setting it up for failure. Leon S. Kennedy, Leon S. Preston Esquire. Leon S. Kennedy, uh, first day on his job as a cop, shows up late, hungover, and drunk. And that's why he misses getting turned into a zombie. That's weird. First day on the job, seriously. First day on the job. Leon, not the professional. I was probably the 800 millionth person to make that joke. Let's make the drink. So what is the drink gonna be? So that's a great question, right? Because there's no cocktails in this other than whatever Leon was drinking the night before, but he seems more like a, a beer and potatoes guy to me. Main, the thing in the, the game is T-Virus. T-Virus turns you into a zombie. So T-Virus makes things into zombies. It's a bioweapon, usually represented as a cylinder with a little blue spiral in it. Um, and actually some people have done very uh, compelling looking T-Virus cocktails online already. Uh, they use a blue Twizzler uh, as a shoot in, a, in a coil and inside of a shooter. It looks great. I, I really, uh, honestly, I'm kind of bummed I didn't think of that because I don't want to steal it. It's a beautiful thing, but we're going to do something else to get the same thing. And what is the drink? I was racking my brains about this and then it smacked me right in the face. It's like a zombie game. So we're going to do a variation on a zombie. And I call this variation on the zombie the T-Virus. Let's make the drink. It's going to get a little arts and craftsy here. To pull this off, I bought some blue silicon uh, airline tubing like you'd have in a fish tank, right? And we're gonna make basically a custom silly straw for this drink. And I don't know how much I'm gonna need, but we'll just cut off a length that's probably more than we'll need and then we'll trim it to fit. So what you wanna do is kinda work this into the bottom of the glass. Then as you're going and you get your coils right, start packing it in crushed ice to hold it in place. And it's kinda the same way that people would with like a punch bowl uh, when they start doing that thing where they place all the fruit on the outside and they pack it in ice to make it look cool. And so that's gonna be uh, part of the presentation here. I'm gonna take the rest of this, I'm gonna leave that much space on it because the rest of that's probably gonna be for the shaker. And then I'm gonna trim this later, but for the moment I'm gonna throw this back in my freezer. Now I'm gonna make this drink in my shaker. To start with, I'm gonna need an ounce of lime juice. Uh, I need a half an ounce of allspice dram. I'm using St. Elspeth's Allspace Dram. Uh, there's a couple of other ones on the market. Uh, St. Elspeth's is pretty great. I need a quarter ounce of grenadine. Uh, I use homemade grenadine, and I recommend you do the same. Um, or at the very least, don't use gr Rose's grenadine. You wanna find one where the first ingredient is pomegranates. It's a quarter ounce of grenadine in there. I need one and a half ounces of Plantation Five Year Reserve. Need one and a half ounces of Appleton Estate 12 year. And I need um, half an ounce of Ray and Nephew Overproof. And if you're doing the math, you're gonna say, whoa, that's a lot of, that's a lot of alcohol. So the zombie was a famous tiki drink known for its potency. Done another episode on it. Um, it's the one that, uh, you know, classically, uh, Don the Beachcomber said he would only serve two per customer. Honestly, even two might be too many. It's gonna knock me on my ass. Zombies often call for a combination of absinthe and Angostura bitters. I'm swapping that out for uh, Zocalipta Mole bitters from Bitterman's. Um, good stuff, a little spicy, a little darker in flavor. You know, four dashes or two eyedroppers full. Um, you know, it is kind of a two taste ingredient. I'm gonna do a quick shake on this. Now, you don't even necessarily need to shake this. We could just pour this over the crushed ice in the glass. I'm gonna put a little crushed ice into the shaker tin and just gonna jostle it up a little bit just to get it combined. We're not gonna aggressively shake this. That's enough, really. Um, at that point, that's, it's cold, it's wet. Uh, we're ready to pour the drink and I'm just gonna open pour this.
finish topping this off with some more ice. Get it all over the bar. That's how people know you're serious. You do that in slow motion, they love it. It's a cascade of snow, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And now we gotta finish this garnish up. Garnish this with a sprig of fresh mint like I would any zombie. Uh, this little gadget right here, I love this damn thing. This is my herb keeper. Uh, it's a glass cylinder with some, some, uh, some water in it. This keeps things fresh an absurdly long period of time. This mint has been in here over a week. The other thing I love about it is, you ever see uh, Back to the Future Part 2? Uh, you know when uh, they're at the dinner table and they have the hydroponic like fruit farm that comes down? Reminds me of that, and I've always wanted that hydroponic fruit farm. I've been obsessed with that ever since I was a kid. Give that a quick slap. Uh, you know, you could, do, you could do all kinds of things. Some people do it on the back of their hand. Some people do this, like, uh, like they're smudging it, like a sage thing or something. Uh, it doesn't matter, you just wanna express some oil out of there. Stick that into the glass. And I think we can garnish this one better. I made these the other night in preparation for that. These are Umbrella Corp drink umbrellas. Um, I bought some drink umbrellas and I painted them red and white. And I think that really kind of completes the drink, don't you? Real arts and crafts Martha Stewart episode here. Uh, and there we have the T-Virus. If you're playing, this tube makes a lot of sense because you could have that all, you can cut it to length. I also imagine that, you know, it's obviously, it's a very hazardous job working for Umbrella Corp. Um, and I think that uh, there's probably a, a good R&R program because, you know, they probably have an island somewhere they send people on vacation. And I think that this is probably what they serve at the Cabana Bar, uh, the uh, T-Virus. Mm. Oh my God, I love that. I really like that. Okay, that is a strong drink um, with a lot of spice notes but a good healthy dose of banana funky rumness right up front. Strong glass of liquor to enjoy after surviving an attack from the liquor. A lot of rum. A lot of um, allspice and kind of pepper notes. Um, not like hot pepper, but like black pepper. Lots of um, mm, cinnamon. Strong cinnamon note in there too. I'm thoroughly going to enjoy this now. So, Resident Evil 2, very important entry in the survival horror genre of video games. Very serious zombie game. Uh, spawns a whole franchise of movies. Uh, not my favorite zombie movies. Honestly, um, I go uh, my top three, and I'm going to put them in no particular order. Zombie movies. Uh, and one of them is maybe not really a zombie movie, but my top three, I gotta go with the original Night of the Living Dead. Woo, creepy. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, which scared the shit out of me when I was a kid because it didn't register that it was really a comedy. Uh, it was just, it set up this world where like, you can't stop the zombies no matter what. You take them apart, their little pieces, their pieces are still flopping around. Oh my God, that was scary. Also, boobs. I made my grandparents, they were babysitting me one night. I said, I want to watch this. I was like eight. And we rented that at the VHS store. And it was a lovely night. And then, uh, Night of the Comet. See, this is the problem with these things. Daddy would have gotten us Uzis. Oh, that's a great one. That's a good, good movie. Not, sort of a zombie movie. There's some zombies. Some zombies. But not many. Zombies. You do get those bitter notes from the Zocoletel, uh, Zocoletel, Zocoletel. I don't know how to pronounce that. X O C O L A T L. Zocoletel. Chocolatel. Zocoletel. 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 Zocoletel mole bitters. Uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, they're bitters with a heavy dark chocolate component. It's good. Um, and you get those bitter sweet, bittersweet chocolatey notes in here, accentuated by the allspice. Um, boys, is a high proof drink. That's the one danger of the silly straw is that you could just like, you could suck it right up and fire yourself into another dimension. Um, that is the show. Uh, so that's how to drink this is a show about making cocktails and how to drink them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like the show, I hope you will subscribe and leave me a comment. I will read it. I promise I do read them all. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at how to drink. I'm on Instagram at how to drink. 
I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Um, if you want to pick one of these guys up, I'll provide a link in the show description. And it'll also be at my website, this is how to drink.com slash gear. And that's the show, my friends. That is the show. So. Did you hear that?